met a gypsy. I had always practiced on motocross, but they would never let us race it, which was silly. But uh, Moto Playground actually had this competition at, really? at Durham Town. Yeah. And whoever got the most likes on their Facebook post got a free trip to the National. And I was broke. And it was gas money. It was lodging. It was everything. So I, I was in community college at the time, but I wasn't really going to college. I was just trying to make my mom happy till that semester ended yeah. so I could quit. Yeah. And I went to the cafeteria or whatever. I didn't go to the cafeteria. We went to the library and yeah. I got on Facebook all day getting them likes. And I went and I won it somehow and got to go race that amateur national and I won the C class. No shit. Which I was riding A off road. So I was sandbagging like a mother. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I was like, hey, I'm allowed to do it. The rule says. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, so well, is that one motherfucker in the C class? Yeah, that was me. That was <laughs> me that year. <laughs> and so pretty quick after that, we went ahead and started trying to do the money classes just because I was too broke to like yeah. not have a chance to win some money. But it, again, it was just something that I did because I had to. I really should have probably been in the B class. But I was like, man, I got to start trying to make money. Yeah. And then eventually you get a fifth and a third and you make your 20 and then you make 200. And then you're like, all right, cool. We made 40 bucks this weekend. And you just get hooked and you keep trying to make it a little bigger and bigger. Dude, that's so cool. It, and uh, shit, sorry, man. No, 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 you get I I get long-winded on some sometime nah, nah, when we nah. smoking that KK. <laughs> nah, that's what we're here for, bro. But uh, Arena Cross was just something that – I'd never really done it, but Team Faith, it was this Christian-based yeah, 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 team. Yeah. I heard they needed a rider, and I was, like, trying to try out for the team. So there was a couple Southeast Arena Cross races I went to and did good enough. You know, they were going to give me a look. And uh, so I was just – I don't know, man. We were trying so hard to just to make just it hustling. anywhere. Yeah, just, yeah. Whether it was on a team or whether it was local stuff, I was just – I was just ate up with it, and I didn't want to quit. Yeah. And – in my mind at the time, I thought if I could ever get there, you know, like I'm going to get rich, I'm going to take care of my family. Yeah. So we were just all in, bro. And I don't know. I just, I could never quit getting hurt. Yeah. It okay. was just broke arm after broke arm. And anytime somebody give you a look, you end up breaking off. Breaking yeah. off. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, hell yeah, we're into you, man. We'll see you in Kansas City and see how you do. And then you wad it in qualifying. And they're like, eh, talk to us next year. And then next year never comes, you know. Yeah. So it was interesting. And, yeah. I, and I also picked it up when Ricky Carmichael was doing the road to Supercross. Oh, yeah, So yeah, the yeah. tracks were fucking gnarly. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but i never seen whoops that big on too many Supercross tracks in our day. They were like, no, nah, if you're going to come race this, you're going to be ready. Yeah, yeah. I remember that little patch of time where they did that, like, road to Supercross thing. Yeah, man. Thanks, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, that shit ate me up and spit me out, bro. So what, um, is there, am I right in saying there's like two separate arena cross series these days or like, cause I think I've always kind of found it like a little bit hard to follow. Yeah. It has been a little confusing cause Feld used to do it. Yeah. I that's believe, what I thought. And now I think somebody else owns, mm. owns the rights to it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's always been so many like you know there's southeast ones there's there's all kinds of little regional series that's what i did for the most part yeah because we never could afford to get to <laughs> get all over the place you know yeah and was it just like you'd work on all your bikes you would do the, like all your own shit like training yourself like the whole deal <laughs> pretty much man i mean when i was on a couple of them teams or whatever when i raced for them shops we had a little support and they might get us a trainer sometimes if we all lived in the same area but it was pretty grassroots and just like my local gym sponsored me so I could work out. <clears throat> I mean, I was just like anywhere I could go. The Mexican restaurant in town would give me gas money. I put a little Morocco on the side of my motorcycle, you know, <laughs> like so bro, good. I was doing anything I could <laughs> to make it happen. That's just like fucking wholesome. You know, like the, <laughs> I just loved it, man. And yeah, we, yeah. we didn't have, I don't know. We didn't have the money for it. Yeah. I go work my construction job all day and then I come home and wrench on bikes. And if there was any sunlight left, I'd ride. But I mean, it was, it was just like, I'd literally show up at an arena cross track, not road in two or three months and just hope I didn't hope I could do it. <sighs> Dude, that's and so I, gnarly. I didn't have a 250F at the time either. So I was borrowing a bike from somebody 
that he would drive from Pennsylvania to all the races. And it's like no practice time on the bike, ain't rode anything, just going out there and just like yeah, no wonder you hoping, fucking crashed. Hoping the instinct works, and then you're like, yeah, man, I wadded it on the triple, and they're like, well, when's the last time you rode Supercross? And I'm like, six months ago. And they're like, why are you even doing out here? But just wanna. at that time, at that point, it was like that was all there was left. Like that's, it was either that or just pack it up and try something else. And yeah, I had a publishing deal offered to me at the time. And when I did the Atlanta Motor Fest or whatever, you know, dude told me, he said, if you don't, if you quit racing, I'll get, I'll sign you a publishing deal. But if you go do this race, I ain't signing you. Really? Because <clears throat> he wanted me to be all in. And yeah, he knew there wasn't a lot of money for a dude like me in the sport. And I was like, no, nah, I just made it in the stadiums. Georgia Dome's going to be my first stadium race. And then second qualifying, I broke my arm. <sighs> so then I FaceTime him and I'm like, hey, man, what about that songwriting deal? And he's like, no, nah, cuz. Really? You don't, you just want something to do. Yeah, yeah. So I had to write for a year before I ever like. What would that publishing deal be worth? I mean, probably 30 or 40 a year, you know, enough, to, p- enough to pay my yeah. bills and it gets you in writing rooms every year or every week you're writing with people and. Yeah. I was so green that people wouldn't really take a right with me because they didn't know who I was or what yeah. I could do. Yeah. So he's like, no, nah, man, you got to come like prove to people in the town that you want to be here and it ain't just something to do. So mm. it took a long time. Yeah. And I, yeah. I sold all my race bikes and I lived off of that. <laughs> I lived off what my two race bikes got me for that year. What would that have been? <clears throat> man, I think I got like I sold my pit bike too. I think I had like twenty five or something, you know. Yeah. And it was just enough to split my rent with my buddy from my hometown, and we just uh, should we just scrape by and made it happen. What, what was he doing? Man, what was he doing? So he was playing college basketball okay. at, at TSU, yeah. <laughs> which is Tennessee State University. And doing American Ninja Warrior, which was crazy, bro. <laughs> so, so we're just we both that's a like, fucking duo right there. We're like, man, fuck this town. We we can't do nothing in this little hometown. So let's move to Nashville. Like it was just gonna change our life, you know. Yeah. But but it did. I mean, I got a fast call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come on. Yeah. Dude, nah, that's fucking cool, man. That's yeah, we such just a, that's such a cool like. It's uh. In the moment, it fucking sucks. Like, it's real hard to... Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's real hard to savor those moments. Like, you you can look back at it now <laughs> with such, like, a so much fond memories. And it's such, like, a... Sure, there's, like, a good vibe. But, mm-hmm. man, when there's, like, so much uncertainty, you don't know what you're going to do. You feel like the world's against you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a... It, it definitely is, like, the thing that drives you to be successful, but it's very hard to, like, enjoy and appreciate those moments until it's, like, now when you're, you're mm. doing the thing that you wanted to do and you can look back and it was kind of worth it, you know? Yeah, but at the time when the stove don't work oh. and the AC in the truck don't work and, yep. like, everything is, everything is a grind and yep. a struggle, you're like, this is not it. Yeah, dude. But then you look back and you're like, that was the best fucking day of my life. I was having so yeah. much more fun than I'm having now with, yeah. with a little money or with a little security or whatever. I'm, like, trying to get back to that guy a little bit. Just yeah. not, not broke, but yeah. just living, man, and just... I don't know. That guy took chances. Yeah, yeah. This guy's a little safe sometimes. I'm like, man, that dude only got here because he was rolling the damn dice. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to be more like old you. Yeah. Well, when you got nothing to lose, bro. You know, nothing that, and, to lose. And that's what it is. Like, dude, I remember, I remember the first time that I was that I lived here. And I lived here like kind of all through my twenties. And there were times where like I, I was I was living with a couple and. um they would they'd like take care of all the bills and shit like that and then they went to fucking they went on holidays somewhere and then like the power and the water just went out and like i didn't have enough fucking money in my account to no, put the power and water on bro and i'm like staying at this house with these two fucking <laughs> dogs and i just couldn't eat anything i could i was just broke as fuck and i was just eating like peanut butter sandwiches and like tuna and crackers with these two fucking dogs and the dogs were eating what i was eating and uh <laughs> Yeah, and they, they came home and they, they fucking turned everything back on. But I remember just being so low, bro. I thought I was the biggest fucking loser in the world. And like, 
now you look back and I'm like, it's pretty pretty funny, you know, like especially once it all works out. Yeah, it's kind of baller actually. You're like, man, you're pretty tough to yeah, get, yeah. To, to have got through some of that stuff that I don't know. Yeah, but it then, takes some people over. Yeah, and I think well, that's what we were saying mm. as well before. You know, like it just you only fail when you stop. Like there's always a chance to make it quote unquote as mm-hmm. long as you keep going but the day you pack up and you fucking never write another hook and you never write another verse like you failed like it's over facts man we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else this is your chance to become a part of the gypsy gang and as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.